Welcome back to Brian's Action Figure Reviews and this is the second in my two part series of custom action figure showcase. These are two custom made figures. I have shown you one already, Kate Kane, and this is the second one. Both of these were made, customized by David Hankinson and they are absolutely fantastic figures. You saw already how good the last one is. So I'm not going to waste too much time and we're going to get on to the second one. So this guy is kind of um, an original creation. And he was made from a McFarlane Borderlands figure. And his name is Genetic Psychopathy. Um, I'll have to let you have a good look at him there. You can see all those custom blood effects and stuff. And weapons, the whole lot. He absolutely looks fantastic. So let's get over and explain some of the details behind Genetic Psychopathy. And where he's coming from and stuff. Let's go. So here we are with Genetic Psychopathy. He was originally made from a McFarlane Borderlands Psycho. I couldn't think of the, the Borderlands character's name, but there we go. So let's look at him here. As you can see, he's quite the mess, this guy. Not in a figure way, but he's covered in blood, cuts and gashes and everything. The, the sculpt up along here is absolutely incredible. When I, when I opened the box to get this guy out, I was absolutely blown away because I had no idea Honest to God, no idea what this was even meant from because I have never collected the Borderlands line at all myself. So when I took him out of the box, I was like, oh my days, what is this thing? <laughs> it's like, um, to hold it in hand, it's like a Mortal Kombat meets Saw character. It's really incredible. I think there was, um, was there a video game out in the early, early 2000s called the suffering that's what he reminded me of something from that so as you can see like there's blood splatters and knife knife cuts everything on this guy blood even bullet holes along here so yeah this guy is class so let's give you some description so the bottom part of him was dyed with rit dye synthetic to take care of the rub on joints then it was repainted so you can see the blood on the pants here it looks absolutely savage and even the little little spots and stuff on a knife and a knee pad and going into the knees as well you can see it there it looks absolutely incredible this guy was at a rough party wherever he was but um the blood splatter around the legs and feet they're really awesome now one thing i could say about this is maybe there could be some more blood splatter at the back of the legs as well just a little bit but that is or on the sides here but the front is absolutely brilliant um it's just class so you see all the bullet holes and the cuts up along here and on the neck and on the back these were made with a hot scalpel um same with the bullet holes and then David used Tamiya Clear Red mixed with black wash to make the blood. So it doesn't look like that cartoony blood. It's that real visceral, dirty, gory blood. This this weapon did come with Psycho. But um The rifle, I knew I I knew I'd seen this somewhere before. This is from um a Mezco Deadpool. And the, the Desert Eagle here, 0 0.50. <laughs> if you've seen Lockstock, you'll get that one. This was another 3D print. It was repainted in dry bush with brass and brown wash to give it that old rusty look, if you can see it there. And that looks absolutely brilliant. It really like looks like one of those classic gunslinger guns. So let's stick that back in the belt there. As if this guy didn't need any more weapons, right? So, on the whole, this guy is incredible. Um, 
let's start with the articulation. Now, before I go any further, the head was swapped with a cast of this skull. Then that was repainted red and dry brushed black and a little silver. So you get that kind of, the creaky kind of look to him. Now, the one thing I would say about the head is it is a bit loose. So, but I'm sure that, that can be, that's fine. The head is a little bit loose, sits loose in the, in the top, but you can move it into a certain spot that it will stay in the one spot. So as for articulation, I'm wary of McFarland's back, the, these McFarland's because uh, they had a tendency to break. But you do get wrist articulation here and here, articulation at the elbow, articulation up here the shoulder, that comes out up that far. It's the same on the other hand. You get a kind of chest articulation here, which goes all the way around. That's cool. No waist articulation. The legs, you get single jointed knee that goes left and right. You do get this much swivel on him there. And he will kick out a little bit. And there's no real... Not much articulation at the legs. And again, the single joint at both sides. So, let's get a look at this guy next to some other figures. Again, guys, I can't stress how incredible the sculpt is in this one. And the paint detail as well is absolutely savage. So, here he is next to Marvel Legends Daredevil. Here he is next to Star Wars Black Series Anakin Skywalker. Here he is next to a Storm Collectibles Kazuya Mishima. Here he is next to a Dragon Ball Z Goku. So as you can see he's quite tall. How tall is he? Let's find out. So he is Just, just on, just an in, just minor inch under seven inches, so he is quite a big dude. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. And um, David, I hope you enjoyed this review because you've done an awesome job with both these figures. This is my second one now, and I will be doing pictures with this guy right after this review is over. So stay tuned to that. And uh, guys, drop a comment. Tell us what you like and what you don't like about this figure. Leave a like regardless. And um, please subscribe. And stay till the after credit scene, which will be some pictures. So thanks once again, guys. See you real soon. Bye.